What if you woke up tomorrow and you could hear what everyone around you was thinking? No whispers, no lies, just a raw, unfiltered broadcast of people's inner worlds. Your boss secretly hates his job. Your best friend envies you more than she admits. And your neighbor, let's just say, you'll never look at him the same way again. Sounds like sci-fi, right? Except we're closer to this reality than you might think. Let's explore a world where the human mind becomes an open book. What happens when thoughts are no longer private? Would society evolve or unravel? It starts small. Maybe it's a tech breakthrough, let's say Neuralink or some rival startup, rolls out the first consumer-grade neural reader. It's a sleek headband or tiny implant that can decode your inner monologue and convert it into text or speech. At first, it's marketed as a life-changing tool for people with paralysis or speech disorders. Imagine being able to communicate just by thinking no voice, no movement needed. Hospitals and rehab centers adopt it. Then schools, therapists, even customer service lines. Within six months, it's the new iPhone. Everyone wants one. Reading minds isn't just possible, it's trending. At first, people are careful. You keep your neural reader set to private mode, but curiosity spreads like wildfire. Couples test it for transparency. Kids use it to cheat on exams. Gamers use it to anticipate enemy moves and slowly boundaries dissolve. By the one-year mark, society has changed. Meetings happen in total silence. Executives share ideas telepathically, like digital brainstorms in the cloud. Language barriers vanish. Thought-to-thought -thought translation allows people from opposite ends of the world to speak with total clarity, emotion, and intent intact. Romantic relationships, a whole new game. There's no more guessing what your partner means. No hidden resentment. No pretending you're fine when you're really about to explode. That honesty brings some couples closer than ever. Others don't survive the week. Now here's where it gets strange. You're walking down the street. Thought bubbles drift over strangers' heads. Some are mundane. Did I lock the door? Buy milk. Others are darker. I hate my job. I wish I were someone else. You realize everyone is struggling with something and this is just the beginning what would you do if this happened would you embrace the mind reading tech or fight to keep your thoughts your own let me know in the comments because as you might guess the glow starts to fade thoughts aren't just shared they're stored uploaded datafied advertisers love this why guess what you want when they can know you're thinking about quitting your job? Bam, an ad for a competitor. You feel lonely? Here's a dating app tailored to your exact insecurity. Politicians weaponize it. Campaigns are no longer about debates, they're about triggering neural responses. Candidates don't ask what you believe, they read it and mirror it back to you. Now imagine law enforcement. Someone thinks about committing a crime, not doing it just thinking. Maybe they're angry. Maybe they're venting. But now, their neural data pings a red flag in a national database. Police show up. They say, you were thinking about violence. And just like that, we're living in a pre-crime society. It doesn't stop there. Companies begin screening applicants for thought compatibility. Schools monitor students' minds for boredom or disobedience. Governments track dissidents before they protest. A black market forms neuromasks that scramble your brainwaves. Thought encryption. Illegal sanctuaries in rural zones where tech is banned and no one can hear you think. People begin to snap, overexposed to others' fears, anger, lust, envy. You start doubting your own inner voice. Is this thought even mine? Or did I absorb it from someone else? Psychologists call it neuro-PSTD, a new mental health crisis caused by intrusive thoughts that aren't even your own. The divide grows between those who can afford neural firewalls and those whose minds are wide open. The neural elite shield themselves behind thought encryption. The poor, they're broadcast 24-7, vulnerable to manipulation, exploitation, 
even blackmail. Religious leaders condemn it. They say the soul was never meant to be decoded. Mass protests erupt. Some faiths declare thought-reading tech an abomination. Others see it as divine, finally the truth laid bare. It's a new arms race. Spies steal blueprints directly from scientists' minds. Generals battle over access to enemy thoughts. Your thoughts are no longer your own, their territory. And then comes the twist. A new update rolls out. Mind merge. It doesn't just read thoughts. It shares them. You feel what someone else is feeling. Their pain, their joy, their shame. Instantly. It was meant to create global empathy. End war. Unite humanity. But instead, it breaks people. Because when you see the rawest part of someone, their fear, their guilt, their worst thought, they stop being a mystery. And sometimes, mystery is the only thing holding us together. So what if you could read minds? You'd cure diseases, end loneliness, share love without words. But you'd also lose something we never knew we valued so deeply, mental privacy. The last true sanctuary. Some doors, once opened, can't be closed. If this glimpse into a mind-reading future blew your brain a little, give this video a like, drop a comment with one thought you'd never want exposed, and don't forget to subscribe for more What If Realities every week. Until next time, keep your thoughts your own.